Was this guy supposed to be the ultimate badass? Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to today's special weekend edition. What's up, Mike? What's going on, you guys? How we do? How we doing, Joe? How you doing, Joe? We're doing good, man. Finally, getting together here. We we try to get through the week, but uh, we had some, you know, family stuff coming up. So, the serious cowboy time, bro. Cowboy's corner in the house, man. Killing it with his talking crazy show on Saturdays. Make sure you tune into my boy here, man. He's just putting on. Good, good work here on Saturdays, man. I, I love, I love it, man. Oh man, I, it's I can't do it by myself. I appreciate that. You know, you came on 1980, Agent Nine, uh, Cowboys Champ, OG, Eshawn. There's so many people coming on. Danny Savage, one of the longtime first report listeners, coming on there spitting draft knowledge. You know, the, you know, and everyone else that watches. You know, I, I can't do it without everybody that, that that's a part of it and anybody's welcome you know I, I can have up to 25 people in one show so make sure you show up talking crazy on the corner of crazy and cowboys this is every saturday night that's what it is bro that's what it's just continuous cowboys content here uh and we have a lot more to come you know a lot more a lot more of this content to come through the off season but mike man you know, we're in our second full week of free agency. Let, let, let's hit it here with uh, the topic of the day, Mike. Uh, you know, it's the title here. Have the Cowboys – is this going to – are are they setting us up for a down year, a rebuild year, Mike? Let, let's, let's talk on that real quick. What's your thought on that, Mike? Joe, there's a lot to dissect. There was that question right there? There's so many moving parts to it, right? Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, these guys think, hey, we got Mike McCarthy. As long as everybody stays healthy, we can go 12 and 5 because that's what Mike McCarthy has shown us. So they're betting their chips on Mike McCarthy's last year that not only can we have a winning season, you got to prove to me that you can go deep in the playoffs. Then you got Dak Prescott, who under Mike McCarthy's play calling benefited from it, right? Second MVP caliber vote, an all pro season. CD Lamb benefited from that. No running game to speak of. Look, when you say they're building it up for a rebuild, they're building it up for now because they know that Mike McCarthy, with he- when when everyone's healthy, can get you at least twelve wins. They're setting up with Dak Prescott with Mike McCarthy can be all pro type player, second in MVP voting, right? So what they're betting on is, hey, there's no need for us to go spend money because if this doesn't work out, we got a lot of money next year that we can go rebuild around a younger guy, right? So it's you know. Th- Either you, it's catch 22 because either you have a good year and they extend everybody and everyone comes back or you have a bad year. They have all this cap money and they go rebuild around a younger quarterback. And so it's one of those things where Mike McCarthy and Dak, it's put up or shut up, Joe. Yeah, no. Yeah, they're, they're definitely gonna, not going to come out here and, uh, uh, you know, say that they're rebuilding. But I think uh, from what we've seen so far, Mike, this has been the most quiet free agency, you know, so far. Uh, e- even in re-signing their own guys, Mike. I mean, we got a long snapper. We got Jay Lou. All right. We got Jay Lou. 
Right. We let Tyron walk. So nothing surprising, Mike. I think these guys, you know, I, I think a lot of fans have this like, oh, you know, shit, you know, they're getting caught with their pants down. But the thing is, these guys already foreshadow this stuff. You know, they have this already, um, you know, like a roadmap. You know what I mean? Like, okay, this year this is going to come up. I mean, that's why they were so easy. I mean, this is why, I mean, we talked about this last time. This is why they were so it was easy for them to, to say, okay, Tyron, go ahead and go go find you a contract. We're moving on. And to me, Mike, like we said, it, it looks more in-house, right? It looks like they're going to go in-house, maybe throw a draft pick at it somewhere in the first three rounds or somewhere, Mike. So quiet, quiet offseason. Probably one of the quietest ones here in a long time, Mike. So it doesn't give fans a lot of uh, – <laughs> a lot of uh, – Hope, you know what I mean. It's kind of one of those where you're like, okay, are we in for a down year? Are you guys going to be okay for a down year and then reload, rebuild 2025? Ewers, text quarterback, the number one pick overall, possibly. Who knows what the hell's going to happen there? But he's going to be in the run there, Mike. He'll probably look like a first rounder next next season. Ewers. <laughs> so, so. When the Cowboys lost embarrassingly to the Green Bay Packers, there was no hope for Cowboy fans at all. Yeah. And Jerry knew that. Jerry knew that. And so Jerry, when people were most vulnerable, when people were the most down, wearing a star proudly, Jerry had to talk to the media and say, we're going all in. We're not building for the future. You and me, we laughed at that. But a lot of High caliber content creators are either on YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, doesn't matter. They ate it because they were most vulnerable. We knew that that meant nothing. This is the same Jerry Jones that said Des Bryant's going to be a Dallas Cowboy, and they cut him three weeks later. All right. This is the same Jerry that feeds you fast hopes and swift kicks you right in the ass whenever you least expect it. And the all in, Joe was at a point in time where Cowboy fans were the lowest and they bought into it. So the so all this hope came from a all-in quote from Jerry Jones that a lot of people ate up. But if you listen to us, we knew that that meant nothing, Joe. And so, but people ate it up. So when that all-in didn't come, they're all in their feelings. Yeah, it was. Uh, we knew it was going to be all lies from the get-go. It was more like, okay, let's... Let's see what these guys do. And then you got Jerry coming out saying, well, my definition is not the – I was like, okay, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's official. It's not They're all out, bro. And uh, you you have holes everywhere. You know what I mean? And and that that's, that's the problem with the way they build this team, Mike. You essentially have to have all of your draft class be good, not just rotational, not just – you know, a guy that can contribute here and there. Essentially, the way this team builds it, they're that that the whole draft class better be good ass players, right? And you and I have discussed this for a long time, and a few fans are starting to come around to it. These draft classes have not been good. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, but what about Lamb and Part? Those are your first round picks, okay? Yeah, they do really good there, you know. But we're talking about the whole draft class, the way they build this team. And then you do that, Mike, and you get these uh, one-year deal free agents. This, this is the result you get in January. You know, it's just not good enough. It just the roster just not good enough. It's not ever good enough, Joe. And you know, on talking crazy last night, I talked about the greats of Michael Irvin. I talked about the greats of Troy Aikman and Emmitt Smith. That yes. When you, when you think of culture, and this boils all down to this, when you think of mindsets, to be a champion, you have to think like a champion, Joe. Jerry and Steven were hosting a press conference for a radio show during the height of free agency. That is a championship mindset. Dak Prescott, Micah Parsons, Trayvon Diggs, the leadership of this football team, I don't think not one of them have championship mindset. Micah used to, but the culture tainted him. Now he's all about podcast. 
Dak Prescott used to, but now he's just company man. He don't go against the grain. Trayvon Diggs used to, but now he's scared to tackle George Kittle two years ago in a in, in a big critical moment of a nice catch by Kittle, right? Yeah. No championship mindset, no championship culture from the top to the bottom, Joe. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, right, man. That that's what it is, you know. The oh, the the hungry lion. Okay, now it's just uh, you know, it, it's just Hollywood. It's too much of that shit around here. Jerry welcomes, you know, all of it. You know, br- bring Amazon Prime in here, bring in HBO. Bringing Netflix, all the bullshitters, fuck it. You know, as long as I'm getting the viewers, the eyes, the revenue. Who needs a Super Bowl? This guy is swimming in billions of dollars, right? Who who needs a Super Bowl? What's stupid is it would they would have even more money than they could think of if they would win Super Bowls, bro. Like the way they handle this team is just the most bizarre shit ever, bro. It's Broadway, dude. It's Broadway. You, you you think about it. Every Friday, Dallas Cowboys make a move, somehow, form or fashion. Uh, before the Super Bowl week, Cowboys, oh, are they going to hire Jason Garrett again? Oh, no, they fired Jason Garrett. They're leaning towards Mike McCarthy, right? Every week against Super Bowl and every Friday during this offseason, you can guarantee Jerry's going to have people rumbling all weekend about the Dallas Cowboys. And that's part of the culture that's tainted here. It, it, it's sad, you know. The, the, everyone talks about oh, there, there's winning, je- there, there, there's winning mindset. There, there's, there's, uh, you know, there, there's this and that when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys. We have a losing culture, Joe. We haven't won in an entire generation. Period. There, there, there's no, there, there's no winning. Those Super Bowls, they're old, Joe. They're over. They're thirty years old. Yeah. We have to set a new foundation. And we have to get mindsets in here from the top to the bottom that's thinking about winning Lombardi trophies. Right on, man. I mean, these Super Bowls were back when VHS was still the leading media format. Not even DVDs were (laughs) in place. Not Blu-ray. Not it was VHS tape, bro. And I remember, I remember rewatching those Super Bowls. We got a super chat in the house. From from Mike. Long time, long time follower of the first word for long time follower of Cowboys Corner. The only playoff win during Dak McCarthy era was against the eight and nine Bucks team. It's never enough. Any team could have beaten that Bucks team that year. And Mike it's right on the money, Joe. Right on the money. But people hang their hats. Oh, did you see Dak Prescott's, you know, this and that. Dude, it was against a beat-up Bucks team. Period. And then you, you look at Seattle Seahawks, you can give Dak Prescott props in his first playoff win. But outside of that, no. No, that Bucks team, oh, garbage. You get, They couldn't even beat the youngest team in the league. They couldn't even beat San Francisco on stupid plays to end the game, running up a field with eight seconds left, having Zeke Elliott as a center in the last play. The last plays isn't winning football, Joe. The last play is where you put it on a highlight reel of stupidity. It is, bro. I mean, it seems like every time they get eliminated, it's something just stupid, dude. I remember the one with uh, the one before last year, right? The whole, oh, they didn't get the ball set. The the umpire got in the yeah, way. The first game. <laughs> 2021. And then there was the game with the Rams that freaking destroyed us, not even with their number one back. It was their backup running back whooping us up. 2019. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, a litany of disappointments and uh, ass whoopings, bro. These guys, they, they take it on the chin, and and it's the same pre- post-press conference. Oh, I gotta, I gotta do better. I gotta, I gotta raise the level of whatever the fuck. And I just, yeah, man. Yeah, y'all aren't, y'all aren't the guys to do it, man. Thank you for the, the super chat, Mike. Bernard. Absolutely, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, good, good conversation there, man, dude. So, 
the free agency purge, like I said, you know that that's happening here. Uh, letting go a lot of guys. A lot of them are going to uh, Dan Quinn, the, the commanders. And I'm not even surprised, you know. Guys that don't want to go full speed, they want the the players coach. Well, they're going to go there because it's easy money. Oh, half effort. I'm making money. Let me go follow this guy over here. They suck, bro. Commanders are going to be garbage as fuck, bro. Uh, but then we have a lot of holes. <laughs> and how, how much can you fill in, in the draft? <laughs> And the bigger the draft class, Mike, the, t- the the worse it's been for us. So it's almost like you don't want more picks. Just stay with what you have right now, and try to ha- try to redeem yourself from the last two or three draft classes. You know, there, there's going to be there's going to be some more signings, right? You, you, you're going to the Cowboys. They got their linebacker. Cowboys are probably not going to get a veteran running back, but they're going to get some veteran O-line here. Chuma Adoga, you're going to come back, all right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they they might they might go sign another linebacker in free agency, but other than that, dude, they're, they're going to count on draft picks, and they're going to count on the undrafted guys to come in here. You know, they're going to say, can we find us another Barry Church? Can we find us another Jeff Heath? Can we find us another Tony Romo? You know, they're, they're going to go in here and look at all this and say, hey, we do good getting guys like David Irving after the roster cuts and stash and stealing guys off people's practice squads because they've hung their hats on Zach Martin. They've hung their hats on David Irving. They hung their hats on so many things, Joe, that they really think in their brain they're the best at this strategy because if they didn't think this way, they would have changed it already. It's been 13. 30- years Joe since Brandon Carr was signed and that was the last free agent that they signed to a long term deal other than that it's been bridge players it's been this why because in their brain they think that they know it all and they're the smartest people in the room yeah well they, they talk about a formula right they talk about this is the formula of the Cowboys where you know, they they hit on their first round picks. They they get superstars in the first round, so it keep it keeps uh, the team relatively, you know, uh, relevant in the division, uh, competitive, those sorts of things. But uh, it's it's all about what have you done for me lately? And lately, they just they're not getting it done. You can give us wild card appearances all you want, but at the end of the day, it's it's the victories versus the losses. That's how you rate a quarterback and coach. It's always been like that. You can say what you want about it, but those two are linked together. All right. If your coach and, and, and quarterback aren't winning in the playoffs, you cannot keep going in that direction. But Jerry is so manipulative that the fan base has, has gotten soft too. Like, oh, well, what do you want to do? Huh? I'm a little pussy. What do you want to do? Yeah. I can't stand that, dude. The, you know. I it, won't make glory hole. It's all about that, Joe. You you hit it right on the head right there because so Jerry's scared of getting uncomfortable, right? And if Jerry's scared of getting uncomfortable, a lot of these Rainbow and Unicorn fans see that, and they're scared to get uncomfortable. <laughs> And yeah. so, when 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 are we going to get uncomfortable? I get it. Finding a franchise quarterback isn't easy. But you mean to tell me the 49ers can get to an NFC championship game, and then the following year they can get to a Super Bowl appearance, and they're building around a Mr. Irrelevant quarterback? So you, if Nick Foles can win a Super Bowl – if Joe Flacco can win a Super Bowl, you don't have to have the best quarterback there. You can build a round, a game manager type quarterback, not one where the lights are just that much brighter, Joe. If Jalen Hurts can get you to a Super Bowl, Dak Prescott could, but the lights are just too bright. So build around younger, not older, and go make a push. That's what I think the Dallas Cowboys strategy is if they don't extend Dak Prescott. Yeah, they, they, it's, this will give us a little answer. You know, maybe they have finally have woken up from from this nightmare. But 
I'm not counting on it. Hopefully they have, but uh, you know, you hit on the head, Mike. You know, that's exactly what they got to do. Are they willing to do it? Are they pull the bandaid off? They they did with it with Tyron, right? They finally pulled that bandaid off. I mean, yeah. the Jets got them. The Jets got Tyron on a cheap deal, six million dollars, incentive heavy. You know, so you got to pay him to show up now, and that's that's not loving the game. You know, that's like you're too beat up. You want to take some days off? You know, we, we don't need that, man. Oh, but he's the best player when on the field in this kind of pussy mentality. All right? Yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out, man. I think you, there, there's some double standard in here, right? Because a lot of these Rainbow Unicorn fans are sign somebody. Try it. If it don't work, oh, well. And the same token – They'll say you got to keep Dak. You can't. You you can't just try a new quarterback there. It won't work. There's so many double standards where they put their foot in their mouth. They're not listening to what they say, right? Let this process play out. Your quarterback, Jerry said it two years ago in training camp in the press conference. The top ten percent of your salary crap has to contribute and be available, Joe. So Jerry. Is already putting this on guys who are in the top 10 salary cap. Zach Martin, Dak Prescott, Trayvon Diggs. The top 10% has to contribute. And if they can't, there's a good old brick road. And you need to hit it. Yeah, man. It's, it's, uh, there's, there's a lot to, to think about here. You know, uh, Bill Walsh, the 49ers Super Bowl coach, and Jimmy Johnson would always say, you know, to be successful in the playoffs and win a Super Bowl, you need two things, a solid defensive line and a quarterback. Yeah. Do the Cowboys have a solid defensive line? Not right now. When was the last time we had a solid defensive line? Jay Ratliff, Anthony Spencer, D. Ware, Jason Hatcher, those guys. Yeah, and that window shut real quick. D. Ware. Did I say D. Ware already? Yeah, you had Romo, but a similar type of quarterback to Dak, you know, couldn't win in the playoffs, got hurt, you know, this kind of shit. Undrafted guy. You know. yep. So it's a repetitive thing. Mike, let, let's. Uh, let's you have a uh, super chat. I don't know if you've seen that or not by Jason. Oh, here we go. Jason Renfro. Here we go. Here we go. You want a Super Bowl team? You need a balance of playmaker vets and rookies to be taught by vets. The trace to become playmaker to reigns later. They, yeah, you got to have a good balance, and unfortunately, they don't. You know, you got one-year players. You got reclamation projects, Mike. Sure. Former first-round bust. Oh, Makai Becton. Let's bring his bust ass in here. Isaiah Wynn. These little busty fucks. Uh, all right, so that's that's where you could probably see the Cowboys go. Oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, baby. I got this boy. <laughs> I can't hear the music on my end, so I just see you dancing randomly, dude. It's hilarious. <laughs> I gotta got look into why that took so long. I got new support. Huh? <laughs> no, I think you know you you do need a balance. Is this still playing? Is the music still playing? No, we're good. Here we go. All right, so I, I, you do need a good balance, Jason. You know, uh, of rookies and vets, and but it, it all starts with mindsets. Like, what kind of players? Like, we used to give Jason Garrett a hard time of the right kind of guys, but now looking at that after you know half a decade that he's been gone, it's like, hmm. Huh. We don't have winning culture. We don't have the right kind of guys with the right mindset of a championship mindset we can win your games we can bully on the bad teams 
But when we get punched in the mouth, we go take a seat. And Jason Garrett could never find the right kind of guys. Mike McCarthy's having a hard time finding the right kind of guys. So, you know, if the Cowboys are starting to rebuild next year, buckle me in. I'm ready for it. I, I, we need to get some some dogs, Joe, in here. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree, man. And uh, thank you, Jason, for that super chat. I do appreciate that. It's, it's a good question. You got to have the balance, but unfortunately, these guys they don't have the balls, and they don't have the the right kinds of players that they bring in here. And you make a good point, Mike. Uh, under Garrett, and it continues under McCarthy. That second round continues to haunt these guys. Outside of Diggs, right? Outside of D. Law, all these other guys just. Roll, I mean, major rolling the dice, like stupid stuff. Randy Gregory, Kevin Joseph, Sam Williams, looks like I got another, another knucklehead. Uh, injury guys, you know, like for me, Mike, just use that second rounder and move your first round pick up and get the guy, the impact guy that you want. Because they keep drafting stupid in the second round. Why, why, bro? Why, why even draft your second round pick? If you're going to keep drafting these types of guys, you know, right on the head, Joe. And I think you look at it, the, uh, you know, Sean Lee gave you production, but injuries plagued him. Bruce Carter gave you production, but injuries plagued him. Randy Gregory, you knew he had a marijuana problem. I mean, the list goes on with Jalen Smith. I mean, the list goes on with that second round pick and that hurts you, Joe. That hurts you so bad. This past draft, where none of these players contributed, Mozzie Smith was on the bench. Schoonmaker didn't get you anything. Um, Overshone ACL, Awesome Richards, F- Simi, uh, Junior Fajoko. No one gave you nothing. No, <laughs> zero. Yeah, nothing. And so, how do you even like evaluate that draft? Because it was so bad. Like, do you fire the scout? Do, 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 do you fire yourself, Jerry? As the, like, how did how did this happen? How how did this get so bad where nobody nobody contributed to that playoff game or barely anything during the season? Yeah, and it, it is scouts. It's what it's McClay because these guys they report to him, right? McClay and uh, and Lapointe, you know, your director guys. Your- What happened? Is it music playing or something? Oh, we got a super chat. Oh, what what membership message? I don't see the membership message. Do you see a membership message? Is it still playing? Yeah. <laughs> you said go to the beginning? Oh, man. Yeah, here we go. Thanks for the super chat, uh, Renfro. Do appreciate that, man. Um, Mike. What is the plan at running back, bro? <laughs> I don't know. 
I have no idea. But I, I don't think Jason uh, uh, membership message came through. I don't. I, I went back to the beginning and I looked. I didn't see it. But they're going to get them a little three-year million-dollar running back. And it's going to be a guy. Remember that guy? Was it a fullback? What was that dude's name? He had a goofy name. He came from the Chicago Bears. He got hurt. He, we didn't even see it. Was it Noel? Something Noel? Ryan Noel? Is that who it was? Oh, that fullback? Yeah, something yeah, like that. It, it, it's going to be something stupid like that, Joe. You, and uh, Trey Benson, I, I think you're a Dallas Cowboy. Yeah. I think it's going to be Trey Benson. Yeah, I mean, it's pointing the running back. It's pointing the running back early. And uh, there's what's left. A.J. Dillon re-signed with the Packers. You got Zeke. I don't. I don't. I really don't see them going going back. To Dude, Zeke. If they bring Zeke back, they're not serious. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it might fit what they're doing this season, so it it, it might. <laughs> you know, because so far they don't look like they're in it for anything. So, uh, but yeah. So the other one, who's the other running back they're talking about? Um, who's another guy? They better not trade for an old beat up running back either, bro. I'm, I'll I'll be so. Dude, I, I'll break something. Who's that other running back that's Tom I'm bringing in here? Oh, man, I can't remember the, the third name. Who's that other guy, guys? Yeah, he's still got Hunter Lipke. Yeah, he's still got Deuce Vaughn, who ain't going to do anything. Didn't Malik Davis sign back to the to to a future contract? I think you still got Malik Davis here. Yeah, but he, he is what he is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, J.K. Domas. That was the other guy. I wouldn't mind him, right? He's he's an injury guy, but you know, at least you got something there, right? And then you can still draft, you know. So I think you need at least one somewhat decent free agent guy in here. Um, Snoop Connor, he's he's a camp body, right? Dude Vaughn, practice squad guy. There's no way he's he's making you starting lineup. Um so right now, Mike, I mean, there, there's no running back right now. Is it shotgun time or what? Is he going to be Dak and shotgun? <laughs> you need to shoot yourself in the foot with that shotgun. Yeah. So that's running back, man. That's where we're at right now in free agency. Uh, offensive line, Mike, I think they kind of showed their, their cards here. What What's the feeling here on, on uh, O-line? You know, what, 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 what can you expect in the next two weeks, draft? What, what What's your gut feeling telling you? Yeah, we're, we're going to get the, the veteran linemen. I, I think they have to. It's probably going to be someone they're familiar with, like Chuma Adoga. Um, you know, I, I think the, the the best player available for offensive line, whether that's, you know, Jordan Morgan, uh, awesome, uh, not awesome Richards, um, uh, Mims. Not, is it Mims? Amarius Mims? Okay. Yes. Whether it's Mims or, you know, uh, Powers Johnson. I, 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 Whoever is rated best on their board, if those if those three guys are there at twenty four, then I think that's uh, you're going to take care of your center or your left tackle because Tyler Smith isn't going to left tackle. I'll be shocked to see if Tyler Smith go to left tackle. So Jordan Morgan, uh, Amarius Mims, or, or Powers Johnson, whoever they have rated is going to be drafted here, and uh, I think that's your first round pick. Your second, your second round pick, you're going to probably be looking at another linebacker there, or uh, wide receiver, or running back. Okay, you can go any direction there. And then your third round pick, you're going to clean that up with the running back if you haven't drafted one already, or a linebacker. So I think that's how it's going to fall. But the rest of the players they're going to get here in free agency, bridge of bridges. All right, the London Bridge will be falling down on these players. Yeah, bro. I think you hit it right on the head there with offensive line. It's really could go any direction. Could go center. Could go tackle. It's very deep class. Now, will these guys fumble that and wait to the fourth round to get an offensive lineman? They could. These guys have been known to do stupid shit in the draft. All right. So, what we're thinking all the time, Cowboys usually do the opposite. So, this whole... <laughs> season we're, we're looking at tackles we're looking at these guys Cowboys gonna come out of this draft with a, a safety all right some shit like that. 
And uh, we're going to be like, what the fuck? What about you tackle, motherfuckers? <laughs> Glory <laughs> hell. Yeah, man. So it's going to be it's interesting. And linebacker, Mike, are you buying the hype on Eric Kendricks? You know, it, it, it's it filled a need. It filled a void. You know, he came here because he wanted to play Mike. Obviously, Fred Warner is with the 49ers. And, you know, Fred Warner is probably one of the best line, Mike linebackers in the game. And and Kendricks knew that. That, you know, he if he goes there, he's either going to be a backup to Warner or he's going to be on the strong side uh, play, playing Sam. So he really feels like he could play Mike. He believes in himself. He thinks he can do it. Um, but I, I think it filled a void there. He's, you know, a lot of injuries in his future has not been there. He's been fairly healthy in his career. So, um, you know, I, hopefully he could bring something at 32 years old to, to this defense with Mike Zimmer. He knows the scheme. He knows the strategies. He's, he's probably going to have the green dot. He's going to be doing the play calling. So, uh, you know, the Kendrick signing was definitely a need. It filled it a void. I give it a seven out of ten just because they they took care of that that glaring need that was staring him right in the face. Is he a camp body Anthony Barr or is he gonna be better than Anthony Barr, Mike? He'll be that's, better than Anthony Barr. That's what I gotta know right now. Is this guy camp body Anthony Barr or is he better? He, he he's better than Anthony Barr. Okay, good. That's yeah. all we gotta know, bro. That's all we gotta know. No more Everett. What is that fucker's name? Griffin. Oh, Griffin. Is it to be a monster? Camp body piece of shit. Anthony Barr. I mean, got to be careful some of these guys. They're one-year deals for a reason. Kendricks, I think, still has gas in the tank, man. So I, I think he, he will fill a position there, like you said, Mike. Yeah. But you can't stop there. You got to draft another another linebacker, Mike. You definitely got to do that. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, they, they 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 just have to, Joe. They don't have enough draft picks to fill the voids. So, like I said, Barry Church is there. A Barry Church in this draft. There's a Jeff Heath, a Tony Romo. You know, is there a Cole Beasley, a Miles Austin? There is a Cole Beasley in free agency right now. Winfro, bro. Will they sign him? Probably not. Oh, we got Cooks. Yeah. No, Cooks can go too. You know, and, and people are like, oh, we need, we need Jonathan Hankins back. For what? Well, we need Jonathan Hankins back. He, Aaron Jones put him on skates in that playoff game. Like, he, he can't stop the run. Yeah, he's washed, bro. He's totally washed. I, and I like Hankins. But it's time to get younger there, dude. I can't do it no more. Yeah, no, you're right. He's he, he's done, bro. He's done. Can't do anything for us. Too injury prone, too old. I mean, it is what it is. Hang him up. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah bro man you know what i want to see these guys do bro i want to see these guys be aggressive trade in the top 10 and, and get somebody badass bro like who, who who's worthy of a trade up because you're giving up a, probably a second yeah you're giving up a second a future first i would trade up and get you get your uh, get your quarterback. If there if this is the rebuild and you're gonna let Dak walk, get somebody in here already, bro. You know, the, get somebody the in QB? here. Yeah. QB. QB. Oh, you're, oh, you're fucking nuts! You don't know. You don't know this and that. Uh, 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 a hole. <laughs> Give me a name, Joe. Give me a name. The Dallas Cowboys trade up in the 10th pick in the 2024 draft. The Dallas Cowboys select Bowdix. No, I'm playing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Twats of the world. I'm just kidding. Okay. But depends who's there, right? Minnesota has two first, bro. You know. Which is which is the the wild card in this whole thing, Mike? Is are the Vikings? You and I talked about this offline. Yep. Trade candidates for Dak if if Todd France gets off his his ass and tries to get his his guy the biggest deal ever. He'll he'll request a trade and waive the trade clause. You're down to one team, Mike, and that's the Vikings, right? Two first. 
what are the Vikings going to do? Are they going to hope somebody goes up there? You, I mean, to me, they either want to trade for a, a vet quarterback with those two picks on draft day, or they're going to do some kind of move to go up and give and give another additional third, future third, and get a quarterback. So those that's what the Vikings are going to do, Mike. Mm. You know. I think it's either they want to they want to try to get Herbert from uh, the Chargers or, or or Dak. It's one of the two. They want a vet quarterback or move high enough, throw in a third first, and draft the quarterback. Which is that's a lot of picks for a quarterback, Mike. So that's the wild card. The Vikings. I, I think. I think you have to get something from Dak Prescott, right? And. You know, I, I think you can get a couple of firsts for Dak. Some so, some team will be dumb enough to overpay, and 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 do something like that. I, I if because I, Jerry's never believed in Dak Prescott. Never. There's there's been a lot of reports that justify that from a lot of legit sources. Um, but Todd France has to initiate that conversation. You know, people people read what Stephen Jones said wrong uh, there at that rodeo press conference. He said, we've had conversations about Dak Prescott. We've had personal conversations with Dak Prescott. But he never said when. He never said we're extending him. He never said that's our quarterback. He never said any of that. But people are thinking it like, hey, we're going to go sign him. They're not going to do it. I think they're going to piss off that camp where they don't do it. Because even Dak stood there with Troy Eggman at that convention and was like, it helps the team. I don't know why we wouldn't get it done. So even Dak's confused. So hopefully they get confused enough where Todd Friend says, hey, we want away that trade clause. That's where they're at. They're they're right now that who's gonna blink? Is Todd France gonna say, Hey man, you know, I gotta get my guy his money. We're gonna waive the trade clause. We're gonna explore trade. Cowboys, if that doesn't go. And I think that's exactly what they're trying to do, Mike. I think the pressure, they're trying to create it. They're trying to, I mean, oh, and then this this, this thing with that magically appeared out of nowhere about the allegations. You know, that that's another, <laughs> another storyline there. So it's like, you know, what do you do? What can you do? If you're going to write it out, bro, you have to get something for him. Because otherwise, Mike, this is, this is Kirk Cousins. This guy's going to walk, you get nothing for him. You know what I mean? This is going to be a guy that walks, you get nothing. This is going to be Amari Cooper. You're going to get nothing for him. You're going to get devalued. You know what I mean? So, And and and, and this benefits for all you little pussies out there, as Joe would say, that says, oh, he ain't going to request a trade. He's going to sit it out. He can play. What happens if he gets hurt? And he in that in that contract and his pockets get hit, right? I'm not wishing injury, but you yeah. got to look at this from a player standpoint. What's my best course of action to get paid now? Because there's no guarantee that I can stay healthy. Because Dak, he had a baseball shoulder injury, broken thumb. He 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 hurt it. He tweaked his calf. You know, he, his 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 ankle was touching his asshole there against the Giants. Like, yeah, what like, J, like that that. That's where Cowboys are in that spot too of saying, "Hey, you know, we're we're gonna play hardball with you, and you're gonna risk getting paid next year." And so, Todd France can get that going. That's what it is. And and you got and as a fan, you got to pull yourself away from the situation and think about if this were me, right? What would I want to do? <laughs> For me, I'd be like, "Hey, man, you guys are not gonna pay. Yeah, I'm gonna get a paid a shitload this year." Right, but I'm not gonna get that that super big contract like you said. The risk is there, especially if this line is degraded like it might be. You know, right. like what if they don't draft the premier left tackle or center or guard? I mean, and he's not as mobile as he used to be, right? So he he could suffer a significant injury. Oh, yeah. if he don't play the cards right. The dude has center block feet, Joe. He can't he can't run. Look at this. Is Dak in his prime, bro? Come on. That window closed, dude. That window closed. I think having Mike McCarthy as a play caller here, I think 
Dak Prescott said it himself. His footwork was better because Mike McCarthy taught him better. If you go back, watch, I can't remember who we were playing, but Collinsworth said Dak Prescott felt like he discovered the new game of football because he understood his footwork and how to deliver a football. But if he doesn't have Mike McCarthy, I, I think Dak Prescott digresses in his career. Yeah. Regular season, right? And that's the difference between good and great, you know? Good and great. There's a difference. That's the difference, Mike. Mm-hmm. That's why yeah. I, I that's why I'm I'm a I believe that the MVP should be awarded at the end of the year, at the end of the Super Bowl. Because your guy made it, brought his team from the depths of hell, got him in the Super Bowl, and won. I don't think it should be your regular season passing TD GOAT. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Last, it should be your last man standing, the guy that took his team to the chip and won it all, man. I hate that MVP shit, bro. Them. It's all individual success, and until the Rainbow and Unicorn fans understand that, you know, individual success can only get you so far. Let me know when the only individual success I care about is Super Bowl MVP. That's it, Super Bowl MVP, and how you get that as a Dallas Cowboy player, you have to play in the Super Bowl. <laughs> so that's what I care about. You got to. You got you gotta you gotta make that Super Bowl appearance and you gotta win it. You know, you gotta get in there and win it. Soup all these individual oh second second MVP. Wipe my ass with that. That don't matter. That don't mean nothing. I was second runner up before I got promoted. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get promoted. I was second. You know, but the next promotion I finally got it. Why? Because I was second. Being second don't mean nothing. Either your first or your last, Ricky Bobby. Yeah, you're, yeah, that's what it's. second is. Second place is losing, bro. It is. It's losing. So, uh, great, great discussion here, Mike. We love it. Thank you for coming on here for our weekend special. Uh, should be back here Tuesday night, man. So we'll keep uh, talking, Cowboys. Here, see what these guys do in the off season. Right now, it's very quiet, and like the title says. Is this going to be a down year, a rebuild year? It's kind of looking that way, Mike. Um, but we'll see, man. We'll, we'll see if they have some kind of surprise up their sleeve, up their wizard sleeve, and we'll we'll see, man. We'll see. We'll see what they do. All right. One hundred percent, Joe. One hundred percent. Cowboys Corner, right here on YouTube. Underscore Cowboys Corner on X. And you can find me every Saturday night at nine p.m. on the corner of Crazy and Cowboys. On talking crazy on Cowboys Corner, come talk crazy with me. Links always in the chat. Pop in, say what's up. And we just did a ten year anniversary stream last year for Cowboys Corner. So that was that was such a blessing, such great agent. Nineteen eighty Cowboys champ Eshawn, Danny Savage. Uh, who else comes in here? Um, uh, Cowboys kid, OG. Thank you guys all. Cowboys blog made an appearance. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's my co-host, Cowboys Corner, bro. Can't do without him. He's in the building. All right, guys. That's all we have tonight. Thank you again. We'll see you for the next one, guys. Peace out. Peace.